What's up, YouTube? This is Mathless97, and welcome to episode number 55 of my WWE 2K15 Universe Mode. We're coming off of the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, and we are on the road, on the fast track to Over the Limit. So as we can see, Ryback will be taking on Adam Rose in the opening matchup. Paige defeats Cameron in a clash of divas there as that seems like that rivalry seems to be continuing. The Miz manages to win his matchup. Rusev defeats Zack Ryder in singles competition. We have a rematch from Extreme Rules, non-title match this time, as Dolph Ziggler goes one-on-one -on -one with Christian. Ziggler, of course, the new World Heavyweight Champion, so that'll be an interesting dynamic to throw into that one. And the main event, as we begin a tag team tournament to determine the number one contender for the tag team titles. The first round begins tonight here in Philadelphia, as it will be The Shield taking on Viva Perfecto. So be sure to stay tuned for that main event when it rolls around. But of course, we're kicking things off it's party time as the Adam Rose Express. Oh, the Exotic Express, I should say. I don't know why I can never get that right anymore. I always forget it. The Exotic Express is here. Adam Rose is making his way down to the ring after coming off of a victory over The Miz last week on Raw. But tonight, he's got a completely different opponent in front of him as this is the big guy. The longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in the history of Universe Mode to date. And the longest reigning champion to date. And I don't think he looks very happy. Ryback, we know that his goal since... Really, since winning the Intercontinental Championship has been the World Heavyweight Championship. He's had his sights set on that title for... for I mean... He won the title back at SummerSlam, so it's been, it's getting close to about 10 months for Ryback since he's really figured out that, um, I don't know, that he really has what it takes to go after that world title. He's been on the journey, I mean, as the Intercontinental Champion, he held that belt from SummerSlam to WrestleMania, so now, what's really to stop him from getting a potential world title opportunity? Of course, after losing the Intercontinental Championship, you don't just... You don't simply get a title shot. That's not how it works. You can't lose a match and then get a title opportunity. Although, in recent memory, that's what WWE would seem to like you to believe. <coughs> WrestleMania 29. <coughs> Extreme rules. Sorry about that. But um, anyway, Ryback taking on Adam Rose here tonight. Ryback, he has been getting victories since being drafted over to Raw. But I think Ryback is starting to lose his patience. And he's lost the Intercontinental Championship, so now he knows he can move on. He knows that there's nothing holding him back from getting that world title. And yet, he, you know, he still has to keep hammering away in these matches. He can't just get that World Heavyweight Championship. So Ryback, you know, he's just going to be that much more determined now that he knows that the next step for him is the World Heavyweight Championship. There's nothing else in his way except his opponent's. And when you're going up against someone like Adam Rose, who's still fairly new to the series, still fairly green in that ring, I think I think Ryback, he's not going to find much of a challenge here tonight. <clears throat> not to discredit anything Adam Rose might be capable of, but he's still new. We don't know what he brings to the table, and that could perhaps play to his favor in these early matches, but... You know, a bit of mystery isn't necessarily going to defeat someone the caliber of Ryback, who has crushed nearly every opponent he's faced since making his debut to the series. I mean, that's why he was the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in the history of Universe Mode! Backpack stunner right there! But Adam Rose kips up to his feet, so I guess Adam Rose is a bit more to him than meets the eye. He ducks a clothesline attempt by Ryback, delivers a couple forearms to the face, Ducks a clothesline again, and off the ropes, spine buster, as Adam Rose using Ryback's own momentum against him here. And now Ryback dropped to the corner, and here's Adam Rose. He's firing up here. Look at this. Bronco buster by Adam Rose. And he might think he's got Ryback beat. Oh no, Ryback. 
I mean, what am I saying? Adam Rose, he knows that's not going to be enough to defeat Ryback. So, Adam Rose, he studied the tape. He knows what Ryback brings to the table. But still, that's not necessarily going to be enough to defeat Ryback. It's one thing to know. It's one thing to know in your mind how to defeat somebody, but it's another thing to execute that plan. Because every plan has its flaws. You know, something always goes wrong. And that can never be taken into account. But Adam Rose is looking like he's in trouble here. Ryback's got him up on that top rope. Ryback on the second rope. Look at this. Fall away slam. Off of that second rope. And now look at this. Oh, Ryback's firing up. The crowd's getting behind him. Feed me more. Mino clothesline by Ryback. May have just taken Adam Rose's head off. And don't get up. Don't get up, Adam Rose. You're not going to like the view here. Oh, Ryback. He's got Adam Rose up on his shoulders, marching around the ring, putting him in position for a shelf shock. And that's it. Good night, Adam Rose. We'll see you next week. That is it, folks. Adam Rose has been defeated by Ryback. So Adam Rose, his, his little undefeated streak is over. He's lost his first match here in Universe Mode. And... You know, if there's somebody you want to lose your first match to, obviously you never want to lose, but I'd have to say Ryback. That's a pretty credible superstar to lose your first match to. I mean, you're talking about the longest reigning champion to date. He's beaten the likes of Randy Orton, Sheamus, Big Show, Cody Rhodes. I mean, the list goes on. Ryback, he has just basically conquered everyone, everyone who's faced him in the past. And Adam Rose is just another name to add to that list. But now, as we can see, now that it is, you know, for some reason at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, the attires glitched up, so any new attires I had set didn't really get taken into effect. So now we're going to see some of the new attires that I was planning on using for Extreme Rules. They'll start showing up here. Uh, heading into Over the Limit, as we have Dolph Ziggler, the new World Heavyweight Champion. So, you know, it works. He's got a new t-shirt, a new title around his waist. You know, I guess, I guess in the end, it, it works out still. But Dolph Ziggler here tonight. A rematch against the former champion, Christian, who has also got a new, new look, new attire. So, hopefully you're liking that. I'm trying to spice things up this year. I know in the past... I would kind of use Superstar Threads and nothing more just because it was more convenient to me and I was never a huge, you know, attire guy. Like, oh, we have to change this guy's look because it's essential. But now that I think about it, there's no more Superstar Threads, so I'm going to have to try to stay updated on attires a little bit. Not necessarily saying that, well, first of all, nice bit of showmanship there between these two, showing each other some respect with a, with a handshake there. So it's nice to see that despite losing the world title, Christian's still uh, showing Ziggler respect. These two are still allies. They're still on the same page. But as I was saying, with attires, I gotta try. I'm not. A, I'm not gonna have the most recent attires. Like if, for example, John Cena. He's got how many attires? CM Punk's got how many attires this game? I'm probably not gonna get anything from Community Creations for them. But, you know, for the superstars who only have one attire, and if they're getting featured a lot throughout the series, you know, it, let's compare someone like Dolph Ziggler with someone like Damian Sandow, who really doesn't get featured a whole lot. Sandow probably isn't going to get another attire, whereas Ziggler, he kind of needs this new attire because he's been in a lot of matches showcased in these episodes. Just look at Ziggler right now. This is why he gets showcased. Nine elbows. A bit of flair, and the tenth elbow connects to Christian. That could put Christian away early on. Two count, and a kick out by Christian. Ooh, Ziggler almost had him there. But of course, these two are still going to be a bit worn out from their match at Extreme Rules. So this matchup might not be quite as spectacular as their pay-per-view encounter because, you know, they're not working on 100%. They're probably at about maybe 80, 85 percent. I mean, you got to think that they have recovered a decent amount, but there's still going to be some lingering effects from Extreme Rules from their match. As Christian now, look at this, pulls him back into a neckbreaker. Nice move by Christian. 
But this is a non-title matchup, and this match was actually uh, set up by our Raw GM, Paul Heyman. I'm not sure exactly what Paul Heyman's thinking is. Normally, he's not a man who likes to uh, position the champion and the challenger in you know, in matches against each other like this before the pay-per-view. Because, I mean, let's let's face it, at the next pay-per-view, Over the Limit, Christian, he has a rematch clause. He's going to be cashing it in on Dolph Ziggler then. So it's already set in place, set in stone, Over the Limit, Christian versus Dolph Ziggler for the world title, the rematch. But it is a bit odd that Paul Heyman would put this match together. So I wonder if Paul Heyman just has some sort of ulterior motive behind this one. Does he... I mean, we gotta think, in the past, Christian, he did face Ziggler on the season finale of 2K14 Universe Mode. And, I mean, we did see that Christian refused to shake Ziggler's hand. So there was a bit a bit of tension uh, bubbling underneath the surface there. Of course, that was a different time, a different place. It was a different Christian as well. Now that Christian's had a taste of the gold... He, I don't think he's going to be quite as petty as he was back then. But, but perhaps Paul Heyman is trying to put that to the test. Maybe he's trying to see what Christian's made of. See if he's able to bounce back after losing to Ziggler at Extreme Rules. Because it's one thing to win the world title, but it's another thing to keep yourself on top for a sustained amount of time. And we can compare someone like Ryback, who we saw earlier on, who as I said, held that Intercontinental Championship from SummerSlam to WrestleMania. And then we have, you know, comparing that to a title reign like Christian, where he won the belt at uh, Elimination Chamber and only held it till Extreme Rules. That's not a very impressive title reign. It's still, you know, it's a good thing that you win the world title. That's, that's a feat that's going to be on your resume. It's something that you're going to live with. You can say now that you've won the world title still impressive there are superstars there have been hall of famers who have never won the wwe championship who've never won a world title so christian he can at least add that to his credit but like i said you know i kind of lost my train of thought so let's talk about the match again as we can see well both men were looking for a strike there they took each other out you know as they say great minds think alike and you know when it happens it hurts I guess that's something Jerry Lawler would say, and that's a terrible quote. But look at this. Wait, wait a minute. Ziggler rolled him up. Dolph Ziggler off the roll-up. Caught Christian napping. And that was it. And thank God, because if I'm resorting to quoting Jerry Lawler at this day and age when commentary sucks, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? But yet, like I said, this matchup probably wasn't going to be as long as Extreme Rules was. But still, it was very back and forth. And in the end, Ziggler just caught Christian off guard. And that roll-up was enough to finish Christian off. So Ziggler wins again. For the second night in a row, Dolph Ziggler knocks off Christian. So Ziggler, right off the bat, after winning the World Heavyweight Championship, he's got a win under his belt. So Ziggler can continue building momentum in his favor. But this match is over, so it's time that we move on to something new. Something we haven't done yet in the series a tag team tournament that's right because it's going to be the tag team titles at over the limit they're going to be on the line and the Wyatt family they're going to be watching very closely over the next couple of weeks as we'll be seeing eight tag teams battle it out to determine the number one contender for the tag team titles and this is a good opportunity for a tag team like Viva Perfecto to show their stuff as they really haven't I mean this is a good opportunity for tag teams that haven't been getting featured quite as much or could just be on the cusp of breaking out being the next breakout tag team this is a good opportunity for them to showcase their abilities on a grander stage and here tonight where the shield they're coming off the loss at Extreme Rules this could be a huge opportunity for Curtis Axel and Alberto Del Rio. As the Shield, they're going to be battling some fatigue from the pay-per-view. From their loss to the Wyatt family. And also, they've got that kind of mindset where... You know, when you lose a matchup, you don't have the same amount of confidence as you do after getting a big victory. So, this, this Shield, after having Roman Reigns drafted to SmackDown, 
and now losing their opportunity at the tag team titles. They, I don't know, they, they're on a bit of a rocky, you know, there's, I don't know what I'm trying to say. They're, I, I know what I'm trying to say, I just can't put it into words. They're, I don't know, they're standing at the top of the tag team division is a bit faulty now as um, the Wyatt family, they've, I mean, obviously they're the tag team champions, now they've beaten the Shield. So the Wyatt family have kind of taken that role as the biggest faction in the WWE at the moment. And the Shield, it almost seems like as though they're losing it. I mean, they're just kind of falling apart. And this could be the opportunity that Axel and Del Rio need to really break out. They could perhaps win this matchup, go on to the semifinals, and depending on who their opponent is there, they could find themselves in the number one contenders match for the tag team titles. That's a good way to get yourself on the map as a tag team. And especially defeating an, ata an established, established entity like Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. The Shield, their destructive path, the number of broken bodies in their wake has been well documented. So it would be a huge victory here tonight for Axel and Del Rio if they could knock off the Shield. Cover here off the Northern Lights suplex. Kick out by Axel at two. But then again, this could be very bad for Axel and Del Rio. Is Rollins and Ambrose might be in a bit of an unstable mindset. They could be kind of doubting their abilities. But they're very desperate. You can't doubt that at this point. They're starting to question themselves, which is going to make them more desperate, more willing to take risks and do whatever it takes to score a victory. And for that reason, Axel and Del Rio could be in a lot of trouble here tonight. They could very well just be victims in the Shield's warpath. As we can see, still Rollins and Axel in the ring. No, neither man has tagged out yet at this stage in the game. Curtis Axel, he's taken a lot of punishment from Rollins, but it appears as though Axel now turning the tables in his favor. Del Rio, he's reaching for a tag, but Curtis Axel just, I don't know, he's taking a moment to showcase his ego. As, I mean, you gotta take a, oh, wait a minute. Oh no, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins with a sunset flip power bomb to the floor. Wow, Curtis Axel, that's what happens if you take your eye off the ball, then you're gonna get power bombed to the floor and possibly your neck broken. Man, Axel, how he's going to come back from that, I have no idea. But when you take a look at the tag team like that is Viva Perfecto, you have Del Rio, a former United States champion who has, you know, achieved success in Universe Mode, a former World Heavyweight champion long ago. And then you have The Shield, or no, then you have Curtis Axel who, he's failed to win the Intercontinental title, and now he's just almost been like the sidekick to Alberto Del Rio. But uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit. As well, this match might be over. I might not get a chance. Elbow to the face by Ambrose. And an elbow drop. Curtis Axel's back getting wrenched out of place there by Seth Rollins. Covered by Ambrose. Del Rio not even lifting a finger to help. And that is it, folks. The Shield defeat Viva Perfecto here tonight. So the Shield, they're moving on to the next round in the tournament. Del Rio not even lifting a finger to help Curtis Axel. As I was saying, Del Rio, he's an established entity in the series, whereas Curtis Axel, he's still yet to kind of prove himself. They're not quite on an equal playing field like Seth and, Seth and Dean are. They're, as I said, the Shield, they were all equals, which is what made their tag team work so well. Whereas Axel and Del Rio, perhaps that's what's holding them back. Perhaps Axel's the weak link. Perhaps that's what Del Rio thinks. You might just think Curtis Axel's holding him back. Uh, but Del Rio, this match is over. Going over to help Curtis Axel back to his feet. And, no, wait, no, he's not. Oh, Del Rio, reverse vertical suplex. Del Rio, well, he snapped. After losing to Cesaro last night, he's got to be frustrated. And now he's taking his frustrations out on his tag team partner. Curtis Axel is in trouble as Del Rio. Oh, come on. This is completely uncalled for. Del Rio with a cross arm breaker locked in. Come on. Somebody's got to stop this. This is completely uncalled for. Axel can't even defend himself. He just got knocked out by the shield, and now Del Rio adding insult to injury, making Axel tap out. His own tag team partner. 
And that just shows the mindset Del Rio's in at the moment. He's desperate as well, and he's willing to go to any lengths to make his name known, make his presence felt here on Raw. But that is it for this episode. I want to thank you all for watching, and we're going to take a brief glimpse here at the Tag Team Tournament bracket. So there it is. Those are the teams that are going to be competing. Those are the eight teams that have a shot at the Wyatt Family's Tag Team titles. And that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, keep on YouTubing.